Um, the next thing I want to briefly touch on, which you'll also find in the picture profile menu, are the gamma settings. All right, uh, a, lot of, a lot of people want to know how to get the most dynamic range out of your camera. How can I get the most in my highlights? How can I get the most out of my shadows? Those kinds of things. Well, um, you know, really we could spend an entire hour seminar just on that. But the camera comes with eight preset gamma settings. And um, we're going to thank our friends at xdcam-user.com for providing a brief introduction on the built-in cine gamma settings that you can use right out of the box. So first, let me just get us out of white offset, because that's tripping me out. And let's get us a nice automatic white balance. Open it up. Does that look about balanced? We look white's about right? Feeling good on that? Yeah? Yeah. OK. So now we're going to go into, back into the picture profile menu. Um, I, you'll remember I've named picture profile one flashback only because I like to use it for that flashback setting. But when we go into the settings of the picture profile, come into gamma. And here you have some options. Okay? You've got four standard gammas and four cine gammas. Right? So this is a good spot to get out your notebook, um, take down some notes. We're going to go through one by one what we're talking about here. Standard gamma number one. This is the highest contrast out of the box gamma. It's extremely noisy. Let me uh, open it up for you so you guys get a look. Check it out right here. Um, when I say extremely noisy, I just noisier than usual. This camera really <laughs> handles highlights and lowlights really well. Um, but let's just speed through these. Number two, standard number two, is a more natural looking, uh, more natural looking gamma setting. We're not exaggerating the highlights. We're not exaggerating the shadows. Number three is going to lift the dark areas. That's almost not really noticeable, but you just detect the slightest increase in the darker areas to see a little bit more. And number four, we're talking about brighter but less contrast. Yeah, Overall brighter, less contrast in the image. Now, the cine gammas, this is where people really start to salivate. How do I make my EX3 look like film? Well, you want to select the most appropriate cine gamma. But I want to caution you. Cine gamma number two is automatically broadcast safe, which means cine gammas one Three and four all need a little bit of touch up in post. Why? That's because they're really, really uh, sort of concentrating on the highlights, trying to get, yes? Which one is uh, broadcast safe again? Cine Gamma uh, two. number two. That's what I thought. Yeah, that's broadcast safe. So uh, let, let's just go down the list in order. Let's start at number one. So number one is great for bright areas particularly like if you're outdoors. It really handles highlights well. So um, it, you won't have a blown out spot. You'll actually get to see sort of subtle changes in the highlight areas. Number two, the same, except it automatically corrects for anything above 100% white. You know, when you're getting up to 110, 105, whatever, it'll crush it down to 100 so you're automatically broadcast safe. Nothing to worry about. Um, Sydney so Gamma number three lifts the shadows at the expense of highlights. So it concentrates more in the dark areas. You can see uh, sort of a richer depth inside your shadows. You know, in the shadows of the neck, you can see sort of lines and creases at the expense of highlights. So you are sort of getting blown out on the reflections. Number four, the same as number three, but it's just an overall brighter image. Okay. Um, so again, I just really wanted to touch on the gammas. There's really, yes? Number one crushes the black. Number one. Definitely crushes the blacks. It concentrates more of the quantization on the highlights. All right. 